Uh, picture day, media day, uh, right in the middle of uh, camp. You know, something we got to do. We've got a lot of work to do. So, obviously, everyone's minds are on getting better. Uh, we're not where, where we need to be, which we don't have to be yet. Today's a, a day where we kind of get our bodies, minds right. Next week's a 2-1-2-1-2. Two, one, two, one, two. If I count them all, that's a lot of practices in one week. I understand we're going to get some heat. And uh, we're relatively healthy. Dontre had a... a uh, where he had the broken foot uh, aggravation. We might get him back uh, Monday, Tuesday this week. Marshawn Lattimore is dealing with a little bit of a hamstring right now, again, the other one. Uh, but we're hoping to get him back this week as well. And I'm trying to think that's about it as far as the injury front, significant injuries. Uh, so uh, we're, we're practicing at Coffee Fields. Uh, they took Ackerman from us. Uh, that was my favorite field right over there. And uh, uh, the Starting University keeps building stuff, I guess. So we lost our little practice field. We've got a great setup down. It's like a pro camp. If you're not, oh, you guys are there, I think. Uh, it's, it's a great setup. We're really appreciative of our intramural and and just Gene help, Gene Smith helping us get that all set up. Because I like to take them away. The whole mantra or the whole thought behind that is you have to feel bad before you feel good. And uh, we, we shouldn't be feeling good. You're in training camp. And uh, then we move back here right prior to game week. To, because it's like a golf course out here, what we practice on. So the legs start coming back, start feeling good about competition and playing. But right now we're just in, uh, it's not survival mode yet, but by the time you hit Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, it's going to be pure survival mode, which is what training camp's all about. So with that, I'll answer your questions for you. Front row, Dave. Urban, there's been some talk that uh, Mike Weber and Torn Gibson were really good at the yesterday. Can you confirm that? Have those Mike Weber had his black stripe taken off. Um, <laughs> He's a tough nut. He's a guy that uh, has been doing very well. I think he's only the second one. Isaiah Prince is the first one. Torrance is a guy that uh, we still haven't found our inside nine guy, we call him. He's the Devin Smith. He came to me. Uh, he realizes it's going to take at least a year to play quarterback here, especially with what's in front of him. And he said, I want to play. And I said, well, here's your options. Wildcat quarterback. Um, We'll see what your skill set is at receiver, catching the ball a little bit. Uh, he's a very good athlete. We put him back there returning kicks. Obviously, that wasn't live. So I, I only think it's been a day or two. So for us to you know, say he's the anointed one or he's this or he's that, he's a, a kid that runs around pretty fast and, and is a really good guy. I mean, he's a, a team first guy, which I really appreciate that. But is he moved to receiver? No. No. Is he going to play? You know, remains to be seen. And that was kind of his, uh, came to me and said, I want to play. And he sees what's in front of him with Cardell and JT and, uh, and uh, so forth. Second row left, Bill. Urban, I know you said that you guys don't talk about defending or anything like that. But about what? About defending the title or anything like that. But you've seen what it takes. Knowing that it's going to take 15 games to accomplish that goal, do you change anything in the off-season program to match more longevity maybe be required? Oh, sh sure. Uh, not with the necessity, not for defending, but the health of your team. And that's something that I, I rely very heavily on with Coach Mick. It's uh, interesting that you, you know, my, my confidants are Steve Adazio, Greg Schiano, and some other guys I call frequently and about, hey, tell me about this situation. Tell me about this. Guys that I, you know, no vested interest other than are very good friends and I respect them. And, and last year's team was a team that, you know, no, not much experience. So we practiced a lot different now. How do you get chemistry, execution, team building, yet stay healthy? And that's the that's occupying about. Even as I'm talking to you, that's all I'm thinking about. Because uh, that's a tough, you know, that's a tough. Uh, I mean, it's a good thing to have. I just want to do right by these players. When you brought in uh, Jack Willoughby, the He's doing good. What do you his role being? We lost uh, Kyle Clinton, our kickoff guy, so I think he, we have him starting a kickoff right now. Uh, but he's in a battle for the field goal spot, too. That's an area that we weren't, you know, Sean Nuremberg is a, a fine kicker. He's a freshman, so we don't want to panic too much. And he's got a strong leg, great dude, great guy. Uh, but uh, competition's good. So, And he's been he's been good, good worker. Front row right, Tim? Yeah, Urban, uh, uh, getting back to Torrance, but then the Braxton Miller deal. How, how's the Braxton Miller move going in your mind? The uh, typical receiver, uh, we've, you know, guys that go play receiver that haven't, it's like a guy... Uh, safety going to play corner. That doesn't happen very often. But basically what a corner does in our defense, you line up, you tape your ankles, and you run for two hours of practice and play bump and run man coverage. As a receiver, you line up and you run for two hours. As a quarterback, you don't run. You run for maybe four or five minutes of practice. 
and you're doing other things. So he went through some, uh, you know, just muscle tightness. He's, he's fine, but we're being cautious. This is a big week for him. So we introduced him. He did very good, and uh, I'm anxious, to, as he is, to get going uh, and uh, get a starting spot. Yeah, I don't know if you indicated this or if it was Ed Warner, but uh, are y'all going to be careful with him, though, also from a contact standpoint? Yeah. Uh, what's sort of that plan in a nutshell? Oh, uh, yeah, we're just being cautious. You know, once again, he's a Braxton taking contact isn't an issue. You know, he's taken a lot of contact over his career, and, and we want to make sure that shoulder's healed. You know, we were going to run a double pass the other day, and I want to make sure that he's ready to go throw it, too. So we're going to do uh, keep throwing him this week, too, because that's going to be, uh, you know, with like that weapon that can do that as well as what he can do. That's, I just, God forbid, all of a sudden he throws that darn thing and then something happens. So I just want to make sure. And he's ready. Big week for him. Front row middle. Ryan? Uh, what have you seen with uh, Ed Warner and how he's uh, handled the you know, increased role in his transition? Yeah, it's really not, you know, it's not a dictatorship. It's never been that way. It's a, we, have an, we have an offense. Uh, he's a very good manager. One of his strengths, obviously, he's a heck of a coach, but he's an organizer. And, um, but it's not, you know, this guy does this and all these other guys below. It's, it's, it's a team concept. and. and uh, he's done. He's done very good. His focus. He's got to be. What I can't do is let him take away from that offensive line. Offense line is the most critical. That, that has to be the best coach position on your team. And we're very fortunate. What's happened the last few years here. So we can't lose that. We can't dilute that with calling a play. Because calling a play, believe it or not, it's not that. I hear people say, "I'm going to be the play caller this year." Great, wonderful. You know, I'd rather make sure those five guys are ready to rock and roll, and those plays usually work better. Yeah, he's going to stand the field. That's not for that's the line coach part of it. Even, so. Front row right, Austin. I, mean, I know you're not going to tell us uh, if you've made a decision or when you make a decision, but is one week of practice with the quarterbacks, uh, how much closer would you be in your mind to settling on one of those guys? We're going to meet today. I have not uh, had the data. You know, we've, I, I wanted everybody out of here last night, include myself, to get, get out of Dodge and, and go see your families. And then, uh, we have picture day, and so I'm going to meet with Tim Beck today and Ed, and we're going to. I wanted all a complete printout of every piece of statistical information we have, uh, the gut feeling part, and what I've watched. Uh, you, you know, it is what it is. I think they're both right there, and I, you probably won't expect me to say anything different, but that's that's what it is. They're both working their tails off, and it's one of the uh, it's one of the refre most refreshing competitions I've ever witnessed, and that's also from a family. You know, the families are great. I don't feel the, first of all, we don't put up with that here, but there's, there's zero, hey, what, what, what are you thinking? What are you thinking? We're thinking about Monday's practice is what we're thinking about. And those two guys get along. When I say best friend, they're, they're unbelievable how, how well they get along. And, uh, when you get that data, is this the first time you've looked at it, or do you peek at it every day? I peek at it, but not too much going on. To, I'm going to, like, take it, and, and we have a day that we have some time today, later on. Front row middle, Bill. Some of the position that'll be a quarterback. Corner, it's Garyon and uh, Eli are the starting corners. Uh, Damon Webb's doing very good. Marshawn, we want him to battle. He, he's, he's missed the last two days. We're hoping to get him back in that mix. Uh, you say corner? Uh, defensive end, you got Jalen Hubbard. Taekwon's got one spot. And uh, for the Virginia Tech game, it's going to be Jalen. Or uh, Sam Hubbard at this point. If you, uh, well, I think you were at practice. If you see how hard our practices are and how fast things are moving, I'll, you know, there's, believe me, there's no, we don't have the gold trophy out there. Or, you know, I'm trying to say championship and all that. We're we're in survival now, so it's it's good. No, no, zero left. conversation about that. Second row left, Ari. Sure, you have a very diverse staff, but I imagine that that's probably been a plus for you in recruiting. Um, can you speak maybe the advantage of having a youthful personality like Zach Smith and um, you know his familiarity with pop culture and the way he connects with prospects? Um, did you purposely want a young guy in the staff? And yeah. Great question. Yeah, and that's something that when uh, when friends who get head coaching positions, and we'll have conversations about putting together a staff. You got to be very diverse. You have to be uh, 
uh, recognize your areas of uh, recruiting, and uh, and then you got to have some youth in there. And that's uh, Zach. I've known Zach since he plays for me at Bowling Green, and he is uh, he's taken over the recruiting coordinator spot for us because of his social networking um, stuff that goes on. And I, I'd love it. I you know I'm an old guy that don't quite understand it, but I kind of do now. I'm watching it. Go, wow, this stuff's really good. And, and our recruits are telling us it's the best out there. Our video guy, our video staff, our, our is some kind of Sammy Silverman, who is is a critical in our recruiting uh, process just because of all the graphics. All the, and then Dave Trichelle, our video guy, and then and then Zach. It's it's amazing how it's changed just in the last three years. Do you remember an instance of Zach did something that you, didn't, you were unaware of yourself uh, in terms of like maybe something you knew or said about? Oh, a hundred times. Like, Yeah, I, uh, one day I was with uh, Jalen Holmes, and he's recruiting Jalen Holmes, and uh, I'm in the house with him, and all of a sudden I'm like, I see Jalen Holmes walking around with the uh, iPad in front of him, and he's FaceTiming Zach's kids. I go, so what the hell are you doing? And I, I look over and I see these kids in this video, or you know, on whatever that iPad is, and so that's a, that's a first. So you don't FaceTime with that? No. <laughs> Way to the back left, uh, Matt behind the photographer. I hope number one in our prayer every morning is safety of our players, health of our players, because you see it across the country right now. And man, when that, you just I, I hit ESPN.com and Fox Sports and CBI, you know, I, I pull down these these internet sites and I hit them real fast to see what's going on across the world. And you see that uh, a young guy get uh, hurt. And I don't think the world realizes how much time goes into that. And I said, that's the number one thing, is healthier players. Uh, number two is you want to make it real hard and all the walls are broken down so they bleed on it. We call it bleed on each other and that means just, uh, it's that whole uh, Chesterton quote we live by, the, the soldier doesn't fight because of the hatred of those in front of him. It fights because he, fight, he or she fights because of the love of those behind him. And that's what we're trying to create right now. It's a survival mentality. This week is a tough one. Real tough. Uh, you the relationship I think in your world it's not unique because people say those things and sometimes it's not genuine. This one's very genuine. And uh, because sometimes I'll see, and I've even, even witnessed it where, you know, the guys are battling for a spot and it's, I hear that, but I don't see it. I mean, they're, they're, they really, they encourage each other, they push each other. It's, it's unique. I think it's very unique. In the back, Lori. Question, past years, you and your staff have studied leadership, rugby style, tackling, recovery periods for athletes. What was the focus of what you guys studied this offseason? What you just mentioned, that's very observant, and that's, uh, we just, we've enhanced it over and over again. It's very fluid in, in uh, our world. And the more older, the more I've experienced I get, I realize that you know, we're covering our factor, uh, brotherhood of trust. We, we just, you know, it's a whole new, you know, Josh Allaby and Mike Weber never heard of that before. So we have to reteach and re-go re, re and enhance what we've taught before. And rugby tackle, we completely committed. So, you know, other than that, it's, it's pretty much a culture set. We just have to maintain, you know, maintain and enhance it. No, no, I, I thought I would go do that, but every team's different, and I don't think there's a cookie cutter way of going about your world. And, you know, the one guy I do talk to is Lou Holtz, and not that he's repeated the championship, but he's, he's a, a guy that I have great confidence in, and we can talk. And uh, our more, our, ours is more, because uh, we're different. We're, those, there's zero, we don't have team goals per se. We, you know, we want to compete for a championship in November, but okay. Uh, it's, we want to be nine strong, and that's. That's pounded in this, this, all through this facility is nine strong, nine strong. And uh, we don't want them focused on anything other than uh, their unit. Uh, if we could do uh, one question piece now, Brian. Or right here. I mean, talking about not talking about competing and that sort of thing, but obviously the expectations for this team are going to be sky high going into number one starting here. What, what have you told them, or what will you tell them about that? Especially at the contrary. 
We did. We briefly talked about it, but that's uh, you know we we got we created a monster. You got to feed it. But then, no, I don't want to disappoint you, but really zero conversation about that. These team meetings, and I'd be disappointed to hear our players talk about anything other than Adolphus Washington worrying about the defensive line, and Von Bell and Tyvis worrying about that we have the best safeties in America. Eli and Garyon take care of the world. For Garyon and Eli to worry about something other than that, that's not fair. And um, more importantly, for Coach Combs, Coach Johnson, Coach Ash, myself to worry about something is just, I mean, it doesn't exist. It, it probably exists when they are out and about. The good thing is they're locked down at the hotel with us. And so up until we play the first game, we're locked down. And Far left, Bill. Mm-hmm. Uh, I imagine it was probably an advantage at the time. But right now, I don't. Uh, I was worried about JT when we first got him. You know, he had a hard time getting at 50, 60 yards. I mean, on a rope. Now he's he's fine. He's got great arm strength. His efficiency at the behind center is outstanding, and that means there's not a lot of wasted motion, wasted movement. So he's uh, worked very hard. He uh, actually uh, went to an arm strengthening specialist at one point. I think it was two years ago. Him and Tom Herman had something hooked up. But his arm strength is no issue. Uh, far right, Blake. What have you seen, Coach, from those uh, suspended players? Do you think that some of just a flip on the radar of the one game? Yeah, I do. Uh, I do. Well? Um, yeah, I, I don't want to go individually, but everyone handles it differently. And, and uh, the guys that have taken care of their business in the classroom, off the field, and on a football field, and they have a blip that's called a blip. The guys that have struggled in the classroom, and then this is just another one. You know, it's the ones you worry about. So, and I'm not going to give names, but every case, is every case is different. Far left, David. Well, good question. I uh, I didn't know. Uh, how that works, and so uh, he wanted. I think it's 47, right? And that's Chick Harley, if I remember right. And uh, everyone knows that the respect that we all have for myself and Luke Fickle, and and so I asked Gene, is that because his dad brought it up to me? He's a great, great family, and and I, I get how important. When I was that age, numbers were important. This age, I don't care, but their ages are important. And so if he's a good guy, takes care of his class, and is working in a classroom, he handles his business, which he does. You know, I brought it up, and they said it shouldn't be a problem. And we talked to the Harley family. I personally did. I talked to Archie Griffin. He's kind of the guy you run all kinds of stuff through for obvious reasons. And uh, I didn't see any issue at all. Uh, the third row left. Uh, it's, it's tough. I mean, it's, it's a freaking grind right now, man. And whether it's repeating or not, this is the same as our first year here. So uh, at this point in time, there's not much balance, no. Uh, at, <laughs> but, I, you know, I was going through some health, you know, my chest pains and all that. So I'm fine health-wise and taking care of myself. But it is what it is. These next few weeks, man, there's not a whole lot of – I'm not playing Muirfield right now. I can promise you that. <laughs> Coach, thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Oh.